There are so many machines in Stardew Valley, but we always seem to only focus on kegs, casks, and chrysalariums because they are just so good. But there are a bunch of underrated machines in Stardew Valley that really do serve a good purpose and if used correctly, seriously helps you out a ton on your farm. Did you know if you subscribe to my channel, you can get tons and tons of Stardew Valley videos for free? Well, it's free even if you don't subscribe, but subscribe anyway because that is free too. <laughs> Alrighty, back to the video. Have you ever heard of the wood chipper? Yeah, that is a thing that apparently exists in this game. The wood chipper will allow you to process driftwood and hardwood into regular wood. It is also really easy to get as you simply buy them from Robin's carpentry store for 1000 gold each. After doing some tests with the wood chipper, I can confirm that it really does serve a purpose and it might change the way you gather wood forever. When you place hardwood into the wood chipper, it will turn your hardwood into regular wood. It will mostly produce between 5 and 10 wood per hardwood. There is a very small 2% chance that the wood chipper will produce 15 to 20 wood instead, which is a very nice bonus every now and then. But there is also a chance that it can produce either maple syrup, oak resin or pine tar. The chances to get some resin from the wood chipper are very low, but they can be a nice surprise when you do get them. With the addition of the 1.5 update, we now have access to mahogany trees. And these are extremely good at producing hardwood as each mahogany tree that you will chop down will get you 10 hardwood. If you used all of those 10 pieces of hardwood on the wood chipper, you should generate between 50 or 100 regular pieces of wood. This method of getting wood is considerably more effective at producing wood when compared to chopping down normal trees. What I have decided to do is only plant mahogany trees in the desert and place a bunch of wood trippers right by the trees in the desert. Then I can simply chop down all of the trees and fill up my wood chippers with the hard wood. Wood is actually a very valuable resource and I can generate a ton of this stuff using this method. While driftwood might seem useless, however, it can be placed into recycling machines to produce either 1 to 3 pieces of wood or 1 to 3 pieces of coal. But if you place driftwood into a wood chipper, it will instead produce between 5 to 9 pieces of regular wood. If you have plenty of crab pots, you can very quickly stockpile driftwood and it is definitely a good use for it. We will always need wood in Stardew Valley. Now that we have so much wood, let's put it to use and turn it into coal using the charcoal kiln. The charcoal kiln is a very simple and extremely useful machine that does one thing. It turns wood into coal. Coal is used in tons of recipes and you would often require more than one piece of coal for an item. Bee houses, for example, require eight pieces of coal per bee house. Naturally, you will also be using coal to smelt ores using the forge. So yeah, we pretty much need as much coal as we can get. You will get the recipe to craft a charcoal kin at level four foraging. To craft a charcoal kiln, you simply need 20 wood and 2 copper bars, making it incredibly easy to craft it in the early game. To turn wood into coal, place 10 wood into the charcoal kiln and after 30 in-game minutes, it will produce 1 coal. Yes, 10 wood for 1 coal is pretty pricey. Once you have an unreasonable excess of wood, it kind of becomes worth it. Farming coal in the mines is pretty tedious and buying coal from Clint is just way too expensive. The charcoal kin is just not as bad as it seems. You might not have expected this one, but the telephone has a very interesting use that makes it incredibly helpful. Have you ever died in the mines with very valuable items on you and then you just wake up in Harvey's hospital and all of your valuables are gone? This has happened to me with iridium ore, prismatic shards and even my infinity blade. Usually, you'd have to go to the adventure guild and wait until 2pm before you can enter and reclaim your hard-earned items. 
items. Well, with the telephone, you can actually phone Marlin and use the item recovery service without even having to go there. Something to note though, you will only be able to do this after completing the monster eradication goal for magma sprites and magma sparkers. This is actually not that difficult as you only need to defeat 100 magma sprites and you should be able to reach that number quite quickly, especially if you are grinding in the volcano for cinder shards anyway. The telephone has another incredibly underrated use. Have you ever gone all the way to Marnie's Ranch or to Robin's Carpentry Store to buy some hay or build a new coop? And when you got there, they just randomly decided not to pitch in for work? Well, the telephone will allow you to phone them and see if they are in today. This can save you a ton of time and it can save you from some frustration. The next machine is an interesting one. Although I do not know if it counts as a machine or not, I'm going to add it anyway. The workbench. I have not seen many people use the workbench. What the workbench actually does is it allows you to craft items using resources that are stored in the adjacent chests. Now you won't have to fill your inventory with all the required resources and you won't have to run around looking for them in all of your 100 chests. Simply store your crafting items in the chests that are adjacent to your workbench and craft what you need. You do not know how convenient the workbench is until you give it a try. It is actually game changing. The workbench is also really cheap to buy as you can buy it from Robin's carpentry store for 2000 gold. 2000 gold for an infinite amount of convenience is really worth it in my opinion. I might even buy several of them and set up dedicated crafting stations for specific types of crafting. A new machine introduced in the latest 1.5 update is the farm computer. At first, I thought this was a very useless machine and a waste of batteries and refined quartz. However, the farm computer is actually decently useful. The farm computer will basically give you an overview of everything that is going on on your farm. It will tell you how many crops are ready for harvesting and it will tell you if some machines have completed their processing. If you place this right next to your bed, you can wake up, check the farm computer and play your day accordingly. If you have a farm that is very full with stuff all over the place, like my farm, then the farm computer can definitely save you a lot of time. To get the farm computer recipe, you have to either complete a biome balance or aquatic imbalance special order request for Demetrius. These quests basically task you with catching a bunch of a certain type of fish. So just get yourself an iridium rod, fill it with bait and catch all of them fish. To make it even easier, you can use wild bait. Wild bait will give you a chance to catch two fish at once making it easier to complete the special order request. Demetrius will then give you the recipe to craft a farm computer. To craft it, you will need one dwarf gadget, one battery pack, and 10 refined quartz. You can get a dwarf gadget by cracking open some geodes. Another machine people tend to overlook is the slime egg press and slimes in general. The slime press will create slime eggs for you and these things can sell for a decent amount of gold. And if you have a slime hutch with a bunch of slimes in them, you can stockpile on tons of slime very easily, thereby making you a decent amount of money with little to no effort. And you know me, I'm always looking for more easy ways to make tons of money. To use the slime egg press, simply place 100 slime into the egg press and after a single in-game day, it will create a slime egg of a random color. Slime eggs can sell between 1,000 and 5,000 gold each. And while this might not sound like that much money, you can produce so much slime with your slime hutch that you will basically be printing money with a couple slime egg presses. You unlock the recipe for crafting an egg slime press at level 8 combat, and it requires 25 coal, 1 fire quartz, and 1 battery pack to craft. Up next is the Geo Crusher. I think it's pretty obvious what the Geo Crusher does. It crushes geodes. You can get this machine by completing Clint's special order request called the Cave Patrol, where you are tossed to defeat 50 dust sprites, skeletons, or grubs. This is an incredibly easy quest to complete. 
So you might be thinking why I think this machine is actually good. Well, it's pretty simple really. The Geode Crusher is just an incredibly convenient machine. You can set up like 10 Geode Crushers with 10 hoppers and fill them up with all the different types of geodes. The Geode Crusher will crack open a geode in only one in-game hour and with the use of hoppers, you can just walk past your Geode Crushers to collect the artifacts and then continue on with the rest of your day. It is true that the Geode Crusher does require a piece of coal per geo, which is why I probably only recommend you use this machine once you have reached the end game and you have plenty of coal to spare. The Geode Crusher can definitely help you find one of those artifacts that you are missing for the museum if you're trying to complete the entire museum collection. And that brings us to the end of this video. Are there any machines or mechanisms that seem really bad but you think actually have a really good use? Please let me know in the comments below. I think crab pots with the right professions can actually be really good but I need to go test that a little bit first. If you like this video, consider hitting that subscribe button and as always, I will see you in the next video.